My name is Paul Seme. I'm the founder and executive director of the Street Children Empowerment Foundation. I call myself an empathpreneur because my definition of leadership is more of bringing an impact, making sure that uh, the best assets of this world, the human resource, the children who are roaming on the streets of Accra and in Ghana are given the opportunity to be empowered to, so they can do it for themselves. Uh, growing up with a background from a, a family uh, with several vulnerabilities, I, I had to be doing a lot of petty selling and things on the street myself. Uh, Makola is a place that my mom and myself did a lot of roaming around. So I know the challenges out there. So growing, going to school and becoming a graduate, my definition of leadership changed in my last year in school after I contested for a leadership office in school. Uh, and I asked myself, why do I think I am a leader? What is the, the end product of leadership? For me, the end product of leadership is making an impact making sure human beings' lives are changed. I, with opportunities available to me, having done internships severally with Carl Bank and other institutions, I had the opportunity to go back to these places, but I made the effort and the decision to serve children who cannot give back to me. So for, for my postgraduate, studies, uh, national service, I chose to do it with an organization called the Street Academy. At the Street Academy, they have a non-formal school for street children, so basic, uh, advanced, intermediate, and special school. Uh, and then after that, the kids have moved on into the public school. In that area, I realized that, yes, a lot of kids have been impacted, they are going to school. But after they left the Street Academy non-formal school, what happens? Are they able to sustain themselves? Are they able to go to school? So I, consulting with the director, of the, I did a survey uh, of all the ex-beneficiaries of the non-formal school of the Street Academy. I realized in that survey that 36% of the children that had left the non-formal school are dropping out of school within three months. The reasons they are dropping out of school are varied, but majority is that education is not free. What we have is free tuition. The kids will have to pay for their own exercise books. Uh, they have to pay for their own textbooks. They have to buy their own school backpacks. They have to get their own shoes, their own uniform. They have to pay extra classes, PTA levy, AMA levy. They have to pay uh, several levies, even security man fees, water bill, light bill. Uh, and in some, out of that time in 2010, when I did the survey, it was costing around 960 Ghana cities for a child to get Ghana free education. My name is Elaine Brown. I am from the United States. I have been in Ghana for eight years and have been working with Street Children Empowerment Foundation, SEP, for the last four years. I chose to work with SEP because I agreed with their grassroots, fundamentally looking at the children and how they could help them succeed in becoming good citizens and having an education where they could provide for themselves and their families. In Greater Accra alone, we have over 60,000 street children. And the analysis in that document will tell you that every five years, the number doubles. So as a matter of fact, as we speak in Greater Accra right now, there will be around 100,000 street children. As an organization, we know that the numbers are, in, are enormous and the challenge to solve the street children problem is huge. 
So we adopted a holistic approach, an approach that is able to make us uh, get to the problem so that it, it's sustainable, so that it doesn't become repetitive. We don't do it uh, as a charity, but we do it more as an empowering group. That's why our name, Empowerment, is to say that we want to make you be able to do it. We want to provide sustainable improvements in the life of street and vulnerable children, working closely with their families, the teachers, community leaders, and other relevant stakeholders. I know it's a young man that we found um, on the street selling coconuts. He was standing behind a wagon and had a big machete in his hand, and he would cut the top off of the coconut. You'd drink the coconut juice or water, and then he would split it open so that you could eat the coconut. Sounds good, except that he's only 10 or 11 years old, and he came from the north, was brought here specifically to work for a group of people who earn, who take the money that he earns and then gives him just a little bit of it, not really even enough to support him. They do not provide him with any kind of a house or a home. They do not provide him with food or a place to sleep. So he found himself sleeping in the ministries, which is a group of buildings, and there's really no protection at night for him or for the other guys that are sleeping around there. Uh, life looks really bleak for him because both parents are divorced and now have new families, and so he just doesn't fit in with the family at all. Uh, when we found him, he really was just relying on some other guys about his age, and they were working together to see if they could make a living.
beneficiaries that, that we've rescued. She had a horrible home situation. Dad was sick. He was not able to take care of the family. They had nowhere to turn to. You know, you can only go to family, to relatives for so long, and then they get tired of helping you. And so she really was not receiving any assistance from the family. And so um, she also was selling water in the street. But her selling of water was not so that she could go to school, but it was truly the only family income that they had.
stories I could tell you um, as we watch children walk in here and many of them come because we're able to give them a free glass of water and we start the communication and the conversation there with them with a glass of water as we sit down and we talk to them. 